All right, stand by. Threat, I remind you, you can do whatever you want to. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, keep, hold on, keep eye contact with the body from behind cover, and then move in, yeah. And reset. Did you get hit no. somewhere? No. You're safe, you survived? Yes. Okay, threat. What did uh, you get hit? Body sideways, two times, and also the right hip. Perfect, good work guys, good work. All right, guys, so we talked about the room anatomy, geometry, structures, and all that kind of stuff. And now I want to go a little bit away from all this uh, uh, geometrical stuff and talk about the man himself, the human behind the gun, the human behind the plate carrier, the guy who is actually performing, okay? Because fact is, you can have all the type of equipment in the world and all the type of tactics in the world, but if the human is not able to comply with all this stuff around him, well, our mission won't, won't be achieved, okay? So let's talk uh, about some human behavior. In the same time, it's important for me to highlight that all skills, all techniques, the entire approach in our system uh, to, to CQB training is based on human behavior, okay? Uh, rather than just running and gunning. Before we start, I want to play a video. Uh, it will be like one minute and a half it will have different contexts being shown in a very high tempo and in the end of this video we will start a very short dialogue and the objective of this dialogue is to allow me to understand what is your understanding of CQB and how deep is your level of understanding regarding the human performance in CQB okay and that this dialogue will open this uh, uh, lesson for us okay, okay. What was running in your head with this, when you saw this video? People behaving, they can adapt to the situation. Okay. They are like an overview for, over, um, overview for that. Very good. It's like they are overwhelmed by the environment, correct? A kind of chaos. Kind of chaos. But is it so chaos is, is, a, is a part of fighting, right? In the end, it's, it's a certain point, right? But is it a controlled chaos? It wasn't the, controlled. It wasn't controlled, right? You recognize the flashbangs landing on the people from the back, guns from the back. 
Okay. Um, back to your point, which was um, actually really good. Um, did you recognize that these people were often in mobility? Can we, can we agree that this running through this, often being in movement, being in movement, was forcing them into being exposed to too many problems at once? Okay, this is one contributor, a leading contributor for a person being overwhelmed with information too much. What else did you recognize in this uh, uh, video? I mean, one very important uh, part was, uh, was the environment, mm -hmm. because there was a lot of explosions. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, things falling down from, from the roof, for example, and that are situations you can't influence. Exactly. Even if, even if you have behaved perfectly, you have done your drill perfectly, but then something went totally wrong and you can't have any influence on it. The environment reacts. It's not only the paper targets which we are used to or that role player with like, I don't know, blanks, but it's the environment reacts to you, whether it's humans. For example, there was a moment when the guy enters the room and there is literally a bed on the entry point. He can't run to the corner. He's forced now to run deeper into the room. Or you have three people like this laying in the corner of the room. This has big implications, right? Because for example, in the military for years, we are training to run along the wall to the corners. If you looked in that video, most of those corners were occupied by humans or by furniture, which tomorrow we will discuss it, okay? All right, guys, before we go into the force and force, there is one more thing we have to talk about, which is really important, and that is extracting angles. So think about it this way. Extracting angle is basically like slicing, but in reverse. Why? Due to the following issue. Sometimes during our slice, as we want to be proactive, of course, and secure the room, someone will appear from whatever angle which I already secured. During the time that that person will emerge, I will not be communicating with that angle anymore because I cleared it already. So a short frequent of, 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 of a time, the person who will appear at that angle will be able to see me completely because I'm not working with the apex against his angle because I secured, it, I secured him already. Let's do a quick demonstration so everybody will understand what I mean. Please catch the 45 degrees. So, flashlight, right? Right now he's communicating with this angle right here. Everybody see it? Good. That's also what I see. That means right now, can you see me? No. Can you see my hand? Okay, I'll move just a little bit. Yep. You can see me, right? I can't see him completely. So for example, if you look here, he's behind the cover or concealment. I will take one step to the left and I can see all of his body. You can even see how the shadow of his leg is casted on the floor. That's what I see completely. So now we have the following problem. The slice is not working anymore, right? So this is where extracting angle is, is, is coming into play. He need to adjust his position to my position. And instead of slicing forward more, you'll have to go backwards. So you will slice in reverse. You ready? So when I will say go, or you know what? When you will see me coming, you will go naturally into the narrow angle. Are you ready? Yep. You see what happened? He's able to extract himself. Still a little bit of the leg is exposed, but this is something that could happen. Why? Because you're reactive in nature. You're not able to be perfect in movement and so on and so on. Okay? Is this clear until now? No. Why do we have to practice it? Very simple. First of all, the majority of people are used to paper uh, target shooting, which means staying st uh, stable. And what often we see in force and force is individuals who are basically not conditioned. So they will slice and they will slice, and all of a sudden the threat will jump from somewhere. What they will do is the following. Pum, 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 pum. And they will eat also bullets. And why? Because they are staying on the same angle. Instead, of what you should do is fix your position in according to the threat position. So you are becoming a smaller target for him. He needs to orient again around your position. And you are able to give work in his direction, but at the same time to reduce the chance of getting hit. Make sense? Again, to make it clear, <laughs> in reality, probably I will not take our concealment behind us. All right? But right now, this is just for the purpose of demonstration. Is this clear? Very good. OK. He will be standing inside. OK. Can I see him? Can he see me? No, he can't, right? If there will be a wall, he will not be able to. Same story, right? So now I'm getting, I'm getting closer and closer to him. This area is left. I, I, I can't see it anymore, right? I, it's not controlled. I'm slicing, I'm slicing. And at some point, he will run to, the, to my right. You see it? I saw movement, some, something triggered, and I bail back, okay? Now there is two options. Either you, ba you bail completely back, 
or you lock on. So again, two options, either completely bail out, which this is something I will do when, for example, I see someone with a vest, I can't identify him, but I see someone with a vest or something really weird, or I can just lock on him and just stay on one line with them, but still use this apex between me and that un unknown person. Okay, this is a little bit more proactive and often we don't see it. Often what we see is people just pum, pum, pum and going all the way back to the narrow. Why? Because they don't want to get hit. Make sense until now? Good. Footwork is very simple. Nothing changes. So not only that in this system you learn how to be proactive and clearance and so on, you're also learning how to be able to set your fit to success in, t in situations where you will be reactive or you will need to bail. So if you pay attention to my fits, if something happens, I will push myself away, but the legs are still prepared to work. You see that? It's like fighting, okay? So it's all about stability, mobility, and proper foot. Okay, good. Um, this is extremely, extremely important, okay? This is what makes a difference in force and force, because as we talked, right? Lethal force engagements, which are offensive, are rare. Make sense? You will be reactive, you need to identify. And if that guy just jumps out of nowhere or maybe open a door to my right side, I need to adjust myself to his position because in the end I will be reactive, okay? So just think about it. And you will sit in the force and force, okay? Let's do a small uh, practice. You will be here. Oh, you know what? You, you will come over here. Number two, you will be here. Okay, you will be like narrow angle. Just slice. Hey, hey, go off. So you see what happens, right? He's protected behind cover and he can be now proactive because he bailed back and now I need to come to him, so on, so on, so on. Make sense? Good. So here is a funny thing, special forces, infantry, whatever. We always learn to flow through the door and quicker and so on. So there will be no situation of halting in the door. What do you think is contributing to that situation that there is massing of people uh, uh, in the middle of a corridor or in front of doors. What do you think is leading to this? The movement, the uncontrolled movement, because the first one started and the other ones are following. And the moment the first one are stopping because of they are overwhelmed with the situation or what else, and the other ones are still pushing, you have messing with people. Exactly, because probably at some point, the point man who is the human in the end of the day, who has a family, who have friends, who well, let's admit it, during his entire life was probably not doing it every day, you know, being exposed to explosions in front of him and so on and so on. He's, well, experiencing a very simple human behavior, which is survival behavior of, I don't want to go to that ultimate death over there because it was a loud noise or I saw a, gun, a guy with a gun. And when he stops, because he's used into running, he stops. Everybody behind him, which are also used in two dynamic countries of running in, stops as well. And then we have all of this crowding. That's just one example. One of the issues we have with all of this uncontrolled violence is that it's driven out of the fact that people are fixated on the threat. For example, if someone is coming and punching you in the face, unless you're like, you know, you're like, we guy, what will be your reaction? Like in a classroom, for example, like here, if I will slap you in the face, you will get your chest up and you will start fighting with him, right? You will punch me back because what the f are you doing, right? And sometimes you see it with people that they see a threat and they get all fixated on it completely. Um, in the previous video that you saw with the guy who made an entry on the negative corner fed, when the guy made an entry with a shield, he ran all the way to the end of the room. He even exposed himself to the entire room, but the only thing he did was kicking the, the, the guy on the floor. Why? Human fixation. I will get back to that later. Sydney counterterrorism, uh, the uh, coffee shop siege in 2014. The team enters in a dynamic entry and they receive fire. Flashbang doesn't go off as expected. And at some point, what happens to them is basically what you describe. They fall into a situation which they never trained. They improvise technically. Now this brings us to the following uh, issue. I want you to pay attention. What is the problem here? The one down there is shooting, the one is exposing into the door right now. So the one in the back is not able to have control of the movement from or like, or the guy in his front. Exactly. So probably can have a blue blue. 
exactly. So one common issue that we have in relation to your point, which is extremely critical, is that primarily those tactics, like for example, uh, dynamic entries or running through the door, which have their time and place. I'm not saying they don't, they have. Primarily they're against the human behavior. Why? Because with these guys, what happened was they entered the, 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 the structure over there, the room, they wanted to deploy the flashbangs like always, but then the threat which was located just across the door opened fire first. So the flashbang lands on the door and they, they are shifting into a situation where they don't want to run through the door. And what happened is that you have an entire element fighting from outside. And then it's pushing people who never been into a situation to do stuff like this. Standing behind four people here and four people over there trying to hunt for the threat or the predator. Now, these guys are trained to go through the door at some point, right? Can he see them? No way. Don't tell me stories, even if they're gonna, you can't see them. All right, let's do a nice drill. So just to preview it works. Um, just to make it clear, this window here doesn't exist. All right, this is for you guys to see the interaction, okay? Now here we have a corner fed, and there will be one of you guys standing inside this room, and you can do whatever you want to, okay? Now, the only thing I'm asking you to do is to hide in the corner, as soon as you decide, just sprint from left to right to surprise the guy here, okay? The guy here will have to adjust to the position of the runner. Make sense? Good. You will be here in our angle, you will be inside, challenge him, okay? Okay, at some point during the whole sequence, you are clear to move here, and after that, just challenge him. Just challenge him, and afterwards, we will ask you for your feedback. What have you seen and so on, all right? You ready? Let's go, let's see how it performs. You can't see him. Okay, searching for him again. You see him again. Okay, and so on. Again, we're still not talking about getting back into the same angle and stuff like this. It doesn't matter right now. Right now, we're talking about footwork. Okay, so um, 50, how was it for you? Pretty interesting because it was pretty fast. I saw him second, he, was, he bailed out and came back to me pretty pretty quick, so. All right, so if you would try to, to attack him with a knife or just run to him with a pistol and put some shot, will it be easy for you to, to no, get him? No, he was pretty fast on the safety, so. Okay. It made pretty fast play. Yeah, just one thing I think about because I lost vision. If exactly. I bail out to narrow, I like very the, the, the short bailouts to, to the next uh, angle when I can see him. But if I bail out to narrow, it's, uh, it's not a good feeling to lose exactly. vision to the threat and give up my advantage or what feels like an advantage for me. Exactly, so here comes the final point before we go force and force. And this is a small tip for me to you, okay? You will go inside again? Over here? No, I'll just stay with a pistol. As we talk, we have two types of, ba of uh, bailing out basically. Either I stay on him, walking on him. You could do a small uh, segments of losing contact and then back on him, or that's I'm going completely to the narrow angle. Okay, so I'll just explain it very quick. You ready? Okay, let's go. I'm sizing, I still can't see him. I still can't see him, I still can't see him. I got the 90 degrees, I still can't see him. Can't see him, then I see him. In situations like this, when, when the threat was so sudden, in such a close distance and so violent, I will go back to the narrow angle. Now I lost contact with him, right? In this case, what I will do is I will hold the narrow. Reason for that is that if he, if he will come out, who will be proactive? I will be proactive, and why? Because I have only one angle to watch. While when he will come out, he will have an entire set of angle to watch. So situations like this, I'm gonna bail out in an hour and I'm gonna use it proactivity because it could be that he's waiting for me here with a knife, whatever. So it's just an emergency, uh, emergency procedure to, exactly. to bail same out with in, a, in a very stressful situation. Exactly, same okay. with stoppages. Yeah. Same with stoppages, okay? But that we'll talk about later. Okay. Let's, let's say that you're just a, a civilian, okay? And you're not compliant, right? Just something like that. You ready? Yeah. Of course I can't see him. So don't be smart asses. Oh, oh, hey, hey. Hands up, hands up, come to me. Hey, come to me, come to me. Come to me, hey. Step back, step back, step back, and so on. Now, really quick, what I did, I tried to stay with him. However, I did something that was more realistic and that was getting away with the head and losing him for a few seconds. Why I was doing it is because in reality, human behavior, probably I will try to protect myself from this sudden emergence of something that I don't know what it is. Make sense? 
But in the end, I try to keep eye contact with him and so on and so on. Okay, let's talk about the realities of lifted engagement in CQB. We talked about geometry and all of that. Let's just really talk about the engagement itself. First of all, it's really important to understand that offensive use of lethal force is rare. Why? Why is it rare? Because I need to identify, primarily. Not only that I need to identify, but in the same time, often I will be the assaulter, which means I will be coming from outside against someone who is already digged in, who is the defender. He knows the area, I don't know the area, okay? So often I will be reactive and I will not be able to be offensive. This may vary between police context to military context, but if you look into uh, uh, recent conflicts, and even if you go all the way back to the Vietnam War, often engagements turn to be into a reaction rather than offensive or proactive, okay? Good. With that being said, often uh, the initial response will be by default a defensive behavior rather, rather than offensive. What does defensive behavior mean? In few words, going away from the threat, going away from the predator, rather than, rather than run into it. We saw the videos, right? In the videos, a good example for that will be how people were staying on the door or getting away from the door rather than continuing to run inside. Next point that we have is the poor visual conditions. For example, in the previous videos, you recognize how flash bangs or dust that coming from the floor was empowering the ability of a person to see probably into the room, correct? Or, for example, a police officer who work at night against, I don't know, home invasion or uh, a call for burglar or something like this, he will often have to work with a flashlight, right? So already really poor conditions or in military conditions, right? You are raiding, uh, I don't know, an open field, you cross through it and then you have to clear a complex. Inside a complex it might be dark, right? So you will need time to readjust, which again brings us to the point that we need more time to identify, which again brings to the point that we can be offensive in identification and engagement. Next point is that often there will be short distance and time. In this case, distance and times are relatively the same. Anyone is familiar with Hicks law? Go, a few words. You have a lot of options. Uh, you need longer time to decide. Exactly, the longer time I have, the more options and the complex of options that I have. Making sense? Now the problem is in CQB obviously both distance and time are very short. I mean this room is already short, right? Uh, uh, your, your home, right? The rooms are how, how wide normally? What, four meters? Three meters? Okay, good. So that distance and time is already by default brings me into a defensive behavior because anything that will appear all of a sudden will be probably so intense for me that I'm gonna get away from it because my body will go into a default behavior, okay? But we'll get back to that later. Another issue that we see in CQB is often the duress and stress. Duress is more of the physical uh, fitness level of the operator, okay? People who are less fit will come faster into the limitations. For example, uh, in force on force, something really interesting we see is that after like three minutes of fighting against each other, and I'm not talking about running, just fighting against each other, you will hear guys breathing like this, <laughs> even though they were not running, okay? So a person who has lower endurance level will come to his uh, limits much faster. Then we have the stress level, which again, uh, uh, it's pretty much in the eye of the beholder, okay? Um, every person is able to tolerate a certain amount of, of, of stress, but at some point that stress in close distance and in high intensity will be sometimes too much, okay? And that will cause uh, for, to people to shift into defensive behaviors and so on. And above all, we have mental conditions which affect our performance, acute stress response, threat fixation, uh, fixation and perceptual distortions. Those things are more among several stuff that affect our ability to perform normal. So for example, uh, if we take it into a daily life example, um, I can sit in a classroom with no time limit, whatever, and I can write the test really perfectly. But in the moment that the, the teacher will tell me, you have only three minutes, I will probably write it very quick with a shitty handwriting, right? That will be a good example, okay? Okay. All right, we talked about terminology. We gave you definitions. We raised your awareness regarding what can kill you, what is a danger for you, and so on and so on. And we talked a little bit about human behavior and how it can affect us, okay? Um, we will 
do in the next module, uh, force on force and several physical practices that will prove to you how all of these points connect together with the method which you will learn. Okay? We will prove everything to you, we will, we will validate it on a paper and you will be able to see what works and what's not. Okay? Good. So let's go. What kind of uh, room do we have up ahead? Positive corner thread. Positive corner thread, right? So you can imagine where the thread is going to be and so on and so on. I remind you in this force and force uh, module, as I said in the briefing, um, identify the threat, you see a gun, you're clearly to engage, okay? Yep. Engage him until he's down to the ground. Once the threat is down, you can clear the corner and then I will cut it off, okay? Yep. Um, once the uh, drill will be uh, uh, coming to an end, I will ask you whether you got hit and everything, yep. and you will take, yep. you will just tell me, okay? Yep. All right, let's go. I will be behind you, and just stick to everything you learned, and let's just do it. Yep. You'll see by yourself. All right, stand by. Threat, I remind you, you can do whatever you want to. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, keep, hold on, keep eye contact with the body from behind cover and then move in, yeah. And reset. Did you get hit no. somewhere? No. You're safe, you survived? Yeah. Okay, threat. What did uh, you get hit? Body sideways, two times, and also the right hip. I remind you, identification, work with the apex, okay? Locate the threat, once you engage the threat and he's on the ground, don't get tempted into running into the room, just hold it, watch it. Slide slowly, get the corner, get stuff done, okay? Breathe. All right, let's go. Slowly. Weapon straight, weapon straight. Yeah, weapon a little bit down. Close the elbow. Yeah, exactly. Take your time. Yeah, very good. Shoulder check. Slowly, slowly. Can you see the body? See the body? Everything yeah. is fine? Okay, the corner, the corner, the corner. Very good. Okay, move to the body. Let's go. And ceasefire. Come to me. Did you get hit? No. Nope. All right. Point shooting or sighted? Oh, point shooting. Okay. What did you get hit? <laughs> Identify the threat. Engage him. When, the, when he falls to the ground, just hold him. Don't get tempted into running into the room, okay? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Slowly, take your time. Search speed. Yeah. Shoulder check, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Careful from telegraphing. Ceasefire. All right, did you get hit? No, you didn't felt anything? Okay. Threat, what do you say? Did you get hit, you think? No, the only thing I saw was when he came to the 90, I only saw his barrel because I was in the corner. Right. And as soon as he put the barrel here, I got uh, stimulated. So I was coming into the room. Right. So just watch for it. I saw it as well. It was a small telegraphing moment. He yeah. was able to see it. But you, you were catching up the tempo very good. You extracted yourself and then you got it back again. Yeah? yeah. Very good work. But you didn't get hit. What do you think? Do you think you got him? No. 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 Okay. okay. If you have a threat, identify him, address him, get him down and then look for the hands, waistline, try to understand what's going on. Maybe you shot actually the wrong person, right? Okay. After that, continue to the next angle. With a pistol, don't forget to compress it, okay? Good, let's work. Very good, very good, yeah. Police! Take your time. from your head! Weapon away from your hand! Alright, hold, hold, just stay like this, get it in press. Alright, continue, continue, let's go. Okay, good. Alright, enemy up. Uh, enemy, where uh, do you get hit? Arm, shoulder to uh, chest up. Where do you get hit? I don't know. Maybe on the Do you right feel like side? pain, something like no, really hitting you? nothing. Okay, do you think you were able to hit him? No, 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 I was under pressure. But All right, no. success. Okay. Just, just focus on the movement, take your time. Some of the guys, when they had an engagement, you know, they bounce back and then they try to push themselves into the room. Just take the time. Slice-based entries are like an ambush in motion, okay? Let's go. 
Take your time. Take your time. And up to me. Where did you get hit? Uh, pelvis. Pelvis, how much? Where did you get hit? Okay, first injury. Can you show me exactly where did you get hit? Holster. Holster. Streifschuss? Yeah, I noted it. We'll go through it in the later in the AR. Okay, good. Next. Eye protection on. Go. Take your time. Stack, pull it check. Take your time. Prioritize. Good. Very good work. Stay here. Very good. Where did you get hit? Uh, chest and arm. Um, How much? Um, Just three. one. Where did you get hit? Um, Finger. User, okay. I think it's from from the top. Hello. Point shooting or like sighted shooting? Uh, uh, point shooting. Point shooting. Okay. Three, two, one. Let's go. One. Exactly. Police, turn around, turn around! Stop. Get on the ground, get on the ground! Come to me! On the ground! Alright, stop, alright, stop, 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 stop. Alright. Guys, get a little bit closer. Get a little bit closer. What happened? Let's just go through it really quick. Come here. Just, just let's go through it really quick. Explain like what just happened. Uh, he was uh, facing the wall, and I told him to turn around, and he turned around and he grabbed to the hip, made a movement like this, and okay. then I take the first shot. Okay. Did you saw a gun? No. All right. Identification. We can argue this a lot. Identification is identification. He could have took his, his belt because his pants were about to fall down whatsoever, okay? In the end of the day, if you would shoot someone and he doesn't have a gun, it's problematic, right? Yeah. Okay. One more thing we have to address here is the following. Let's assume that he was a threat, okay? At some point, he shot him and uh, he was still communicating with him because the threat was still alive, probably, or something like this, right? When he was yelling, police, 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 he moved into his room, in, into the room, and he lost his high ground here. Then he told him, come to me, come to me. Wait, you shot him? Maybe he's still up, whatever. Hey, on the ground, on the ground, come to me. Come to me, yeah, come to me, come to me. Come to me, come to me. Stop, stop. And so you can start playing with it because here, for example, he's limited, so on, so on, so on, so on. Okay, so just think about it, all right? Okay. Very good, Joel check. Take the your ground. time, take Tommy your time. In. Tommy in. Okay, what are you looking for right now? You see the threat, what are you looking for? On the left side of the gun. All right, what is the priority, the corner or this guy right now? Now the corner. Now, now? The, in the moment I see the gun is away from him and he's not moving, I Exactly, so you will try to get the corner, but in the same time try to keep some kind of peripheral uh, uh, con con connection with the body. Yeah. All right, so let's continue. Okay, corner and bomb the body, very good. Okay, let's do a feedback real quick. Did you get hit? One here, one okay, finger. finger. And then I flinch out and make another. Okay, good. What do you get hit? Uh, chest and uh, side. And side up, right? Oh. Okay. Nice. Okay, good. 